something I noticed in mainstream media that they did with the Atlanta shootings, because it was at some uh, Asian massage parlors and some, you know, there are some massage parlors that are a, you know, essentially they have, they perform, you know, sex work services in addition to the, you know, the massage parlor services that they, you know, advertise. And that this is, so they kind of are a, a front for us, you know, a sex working, you know, a, a sex work business. So they, one thing that I noticed in some of the mainstream media was that they really took this as an opportunity to, uh, to attack the, the, um, you know, sex workers. And, and I just thought it was a weird flex from the mainstream media. So I wanted to, to, uh, you know, just show you what kind of, what kind of, uh, uh, headlines I was seeing, you know, out of this. And you can see like out of New York times, they said, the killings targeted an industry with a history of concerns about sex trafficking. So, you know, this is like right in the wake of this. And instead of focusing on, you know, the the attacker, as they do whenever it's like a Muslim, you know, uh, person that that, you know, committed some attack they focus, or a black person that committed some crime. They always focus on, you know, the person and their whole history. And even if it's some small, petty, nonviolent crime, you know, they were caught smoking weed or something. They have, they run the whole history and, you know, you know, every little bad thing, every mistake this person ever made, you know, the mainstream media, New York times decided to, uh, you know, Washington Post did stories like this. It wasn't just like major outlets, but also like local outlets too, came in with this like anti-sex worker framing of this, of this situation. And it's just weird because it's like, the problem is these, these, you know, by and large, young white men are, you know, you know, have access to weaponry, you know, have access to these, these weapons of war, essentially, and are being somehow, you know, uh, you know, you know, moved into these situations, right? And and I think that a lot of that that we can talk about, people don't want to hear about it. But it, the, the reality that we got to talk about is like, typically, people that are well off that have, you know, have their basic needs met, right? People that are like wealthy and doing doing all right in life, people, you don't see them as the the mass shooters, right? It's not wealthy or well off or are people that are, are, are you know, in, in a good, you know, fi economic situation, typically, typically, these are poor people, or, you know, financially stressed people that that are, you know, and men, we, we got to be real, it's men that react to these situations with violence. And if we're really going to solve the problem, I mean, there are other countries that have a similar number of guns per person, but they don't have the same number of mass shootings. And I think that it's also about, um, you know, it's not just the guns, but it's also about the way that we, you know, the economic situation and the economic strain that some of these people face. And then there's other social, you know, there's other social cultural issues that we have to get around too. just the history of racism, xenophobia, the demagoguery and those sorts of things that we saw under the Trump, you know, administration, but also through all of America's past in our history, in the history of this country, right? What they've done to, you know, indigenous people, black people, uh, you know, uh, South America, you know, people from South America, uh, Latin America, we, we see how this country is treating those people throughout history. So, uh, you know, this was uh, just a weird flex because they're, 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 you know, always find a way to frame things around, essentially sort of blaming the victims in the situation. It's, it's kind of a form of victim blaming. And, you know, compare this in your mind to the fact that there was a, a mass shooting at a grocery store, uh, you know, just days later, six days after this, there would be a mass shooting in a grocery store in, Col in Boulder, Colorado, that kills more people, more people die in that. Is anybody saying anything about how the grocery workers, you know, there's a danger, they lead a dangerous, you know, job that that needs to be criminalized in some way or, or, you know, to, to frame it all as like sex trafficking and to, to paint it with this picture of sex trafficking is just a, you know, it's, 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 it's anti sex work. Of course, you, we, you know, we on the left, we don't want to see any form of sort of, you know, abuse, or you know, violence, exploitation of people of workers of any human being of but also of workers for sure. And, and so we certainly don't want to see, you know, we don't support anything we want to, we, we would want 
any kind of this, you know, sex trafficking is a violent form of coercion that certainly does not square with, you know, my principles and ideology. And I, I, I am in every way against it and would want to protect people from it. But I think that to turn it around and try to frame this issue, you know, and attach, you know, sex trafficking to this conversation when the issue was, a, a, a you know, some angry young white guy just went in and, and murdered a bunch of these women who were just working, right? Just working. And they, they, you know, they, they, I don't know what, why does the, there have to be a narrative about sex trafficking in this as if they're claiming that these parlors that where the women were shot were somehow associated with sex trafficking when there's no evidence of that whatsoever. And so to attach them to that like that, I think it it, it dehumanizes the victims of the, this crime in a way. And and again, it wasn't just the the New York Times. It was also the uh, Washington Post as well. Again, these are main major outlets, major, major outlets here that are doing this. And I don't I, you know, I don't think they have really uh, you know, any good excuse to be framing it like this. So here's a, a, a headline out of the Washington Post. Part of the massage industry is built on hate crimes against Asian women. I mean, this is, you know, this was March 22nd. You know, the other one was March 18th. Like, this is happening right after these events. And this is the narrative that they that they respond with. You know, you know, uh, at least in this article in the Washington Post, you know, as as you read through, like I I I, I thought that this at least dug in and showed how some of the at least talked about the the way that it actually ends up playing out when we try to you know criminalize this behavior and police this behavior and uh, and so you know this person talks about the fact that they regularly attended police raids on massage businesses in a large midwestern state to provide both basic and continued advocacy advocacy for the women there um while some of these raids focused on arresting Johns for partaking in prostitution or else cracking down on business owners for fraudulent practices or human trafficking, the vast majority of the time, the women ended up in jails themselves. Part of my job was to pick up these women from jail after their release. Often this was my job because they literally knew no one else in the state. Um, while it was often acknowledged by law enforcement that the women were probably victims of exploitation, if not human and sex trafficking, many of the raids I attended were still carried out in a manner that further victimized and traumatized the women. Once this meant pushing all of the women into the street first thing in the morning, shivering in their nightclothes. Another time, two Asian women at a parlor raid were held in the back of a police car, handcuffed while one sobbed and began to have problems breathing. In both instances, local media had arrived and the women struggled to maintain anonymity. Uh, so. They say, you know, treatment of this kind and then subsequent arrests of women were common, despite the fact that almost every woman I spoke to had experienced some form of violence herself, almost exclusively at the hands of a white man at a massage business. Uh, not once had I heard of a woman reporting the violence she experienced to the police, uh, you know, and it was understandable. Most interactions they had with police or interactions they knew of resulted in their arrest and sometimes permanent confiscation of their IDs, cell phone and electronics, credit cards and cash. Many told me that the violence they experienced was their own fault for falling for the lies of a trafficker or exploitative employer. They thought that reporting it would cost them deportation or loss of legal status. They didn't speak English and they didn't know whom to trust or where to go. And the thing about this is that, you know, I, I, you know, sex workers, it's, it's definitely a form of, you know, it's a form of work that in every form of work under a capitalist system is exploitative by its nature. Exploitation is very specifically defined by Marxists as any situation where you have one person extracting the surplus of labor from another person. That's when you extract the surplus of someone else's labor and you take that for yourself, that is what that action is what Marxists refer to as the uh, an act of exploitation. And so all capitalist, you know, you know, systems, all all capitalist dynamics are and relationships are exploitative inherently right there's uh, by by its very nature there's somebody you know, the employer the board of directors you know the a handful of executives and major shareholders who are the employers and everyone else is an employee there and they have the ability to you know they have all the power over those employees and they are able to extract the surplus of their labor and so they are being exploited as well and sex work is no different than any other form of work and so the you know i would you know i there is a inherent danger and, you know, uh, as a, and, and of course, you know, like these people, these, these, the reason why these women are more 
susceptible to violence is is often because they are pushed into the margins right they're not because of the the criminalization of sex work they are unable to report when there's violence done against them they can't report it because of the way that we you know we we treat these people as as if they are somehow criminals then it it, it deters them from you know uh uh reporting any kind of crimes against them and so it it, it makes it so that these people are more vulnerable by by criminalizing the behavior. We don't make these people safer somehow. It's a Puritan esque you know way of trying to feel like we are somehow morally purer than these other people. But the reality is, it sex work is work, and these people shouldn't have their jobs you know criminalized in that way. And so they you know in 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 because all it does is it pushes people further into the margins and and makes the work more dangerous is all. And so. Just, you know, I, I thought it was a really slimy thing for the mainstream media to be doing New York Times, Washington Post to be coming out with these, you know, anti-sex worker articles in the wake of this, you know, violent massacre against them. It, it really just rings and smacks of, of uh, you know, victim blaming where we really should be showing solidarity with these workers and showing how they're they're being exploited, but not in any way that's any different than you know than any other capitalist enterprise, uh, save for the fact that that it is criminalized, right? So so they're exploited in a way similar to sort of um, you know people that are involved in illegal illicit drug trades, right? They those people end up being you know there's high rates of violence because when a, when something is you know a behavior is criminalized, then it is it is driven into the into the shadows, right? And and what when disputes would be solved in a courtroom, what, you know, under a legal system instead have to be solved in the streets with violence and guns. And, and so they, you know, it's not, we're not helping these people by, by, by criminalizing sex work. You know, we should be repealing SESTA FOSTA and, and protecting sex workers, making sex work, you know, recognizing sex work as work. There was special exceptions in like the CARES Act and some of these relief bills have special exceptions carved out in them that say that if you're a sex worker, even though we're going to give, uh, you know, unemployment benefits to all gig workers, if you're a sex worker, you are not allowed. There was a special exclusion against sex workers in the, in the CARES Act. And I believe in subsequent relief bills, I, I need to, I, you know, I should double check and find out if it was in the Biden bill, but you know, that's the situation going on. So, you know, just a, just a really, uh, gross narrative from the mainstream media, but what we've come to expect from them. So just want to show some solidarity with sex workers and, you know, not try to, it's just like, it has a certain like anti-Asian, you know, tone about it in general and, 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 you know, and misogynistic and, and again, just anti-worker is what it really comes down to at the end of the day. Tammy says the headline is Loki saying the spa attacks were vigilante justice because it shed light on sex trafficking. Shake, shaking my head. Exactly. Like this is like, it's like they're like, uh, you know, supporting or condoning um, what the actions of the, of the, the, this, you know, terrorist. Uh, Tammy says, yes, because the murderer who planned and executed his plan to kill the sex workers at the spa or anyone in the way definitely had the interest of saving these women in mind. Exactly. Like, you know, you act like, oh, he was concerned about the sex trafficking. And that's why he went out and murdered eight, you know, you know, eight women um, or or eight people, seven women. Right. Like because he was so concerned about sex trafficking and and, and, and the the the, you know, the, the the pain that that would the harm that it was doing to these women. Um, absolutely not. So Tammy goes on to say the risk of deportation and ICE only further enables the opportunity for exploitation in the human trafficking industry. If they want to talk about human trafficking, then they need to own up to ICE's role. Exactly. Like we got, we, uh, ICE was created in 2001 and it did not exist when I was growing up. It did not exist, you know, just 20 years ago, ICE did not exist. This isn't some longstanding thing that we need. It was created in the wake of like 2000, of 9-11. And so we need to we, we need to go back to a time where we can we can literally just abolish ICE, just do not have any organization, any law enforcement organization that has the authority to go around, you know, in 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 in. Uh, deem anyone a, a a threat to the our national security because of their immigration status and drag them out of their homes or or arrest and detain these people so let's just get rid of that 
you know, Gestapo force that we allow in our country, they're, they're very new and they just, it, we need to abolish ICE outright. And that's, you know, in Joe Biden has the authority to do this. Uh, you know, we, the, the, the Democrats have the ability to do this and they're, they're, they just refuse. They simply do not want to. So Tammy says, how many children in cages have gone missing? Not to mention all those black and or um, indigenous girls and women who have been missing over the years, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah, because they, you know, there's like human trafficking literally happening like through ICE. Like we see like ICE was literally has been, you know, charged with and it has a court case pending against them for slavery, for rape, uh, you know, of, of of the detainees that they have. So so these people are they are, they are able to abuse this power. We literally saw children being trafficked, you know, in places that were, you know, undot, you know, like you know, unreported and, and people were seeing, you know, these, these people being moving children in the middle of the night under Trump and, and people, you know, you know, just, we just allowed that to, to, to happen really. So there's, there's a lot of instances of that happening for sure. Thanks for that. Great point. Tammy says they want to emphasize the juicy details of potential sex work at these spas so that when the murder or sex addiction is brought up because white mass shooters always get their life story told, he can be framed at least somewhat sympathetically. He just, quote, had a bad day. And by emphasizing that the majority of victims were potential sex worker, it helps to remove the, the sympathy for them. Exactly. Because what they're doing here is they're trying to dehumanize these these workers. They're trying to dehumanize them and and devalue their lives and and, and detach you from further from them so that uh, exactly you you this is a you know the the sort of white supremacy playing out in front of our eyes where you know in in white male supremacy really playing out in front of our eyes where it's like oh this guy this what you know this you know just had a bad day but uh but these sex workers that you know are just inherently you know problematic in in in, a, in an issue in un you know unclean and unpure and you know just by existing and again, there's no evidence that these women were sex trafficked. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. So to talk about sex trafficking in the wake of this, it just, it paints these people with a label that just has, we do not know needs to apply to them. There are people, there are people that choose, you know, to do that work. And there, we very mel may well have people that under a, you know, a truly free system choose to, to, to go into that line of work. If, if, if that's what they, you know, they so choose or to do that, you know, you know, people, there are some people that have sex all the time, right. And you can have sex with as many people as you want uh, for free. But as soon as you try to charge something for it, apparently that's when it becomes illegal. You know, this country that talks about, you know, free markets and free enterprise, apparently it stops right at your own body. Like that's where it just stops for an adult, a consenting adult, apparently. 